Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. So today I'm going to show you guys how to get started with client side of JavaScript. JavaScript itself is a programming language. This is all in the browser environment. If we were to use JavaScript in Node.js environment, we would be in the server side. When you're using the browser, we're referring to client side of JavaScript. Okay, so there are two different things, but the syntax of JavaScript, everything is the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to manipulate the DOM with JavaScript. Okay, in case you guys don't know, JavaScript allows us to add more functionalities to our website. HTML HTML is just the content. CSS is the presentation, right? It styles everything up. And JavaScript, you can think of it like the engine of the car that takes care of all of the uh, heavy duty work for you. Okay, so we can use JavaScript on the client side for a lot of different things, such as dynamically changing content every like five seconds, for example. We can use it to fetch data from an external API. We can use it to set a timer or set an interval. So anyways, let's go and get started. I have a simple HTML file, nothing too crazy. And I have two other files, index.js and then index.css. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to go ahead and link my JavaScript. So to do that, you wanna typically, you wanna do it at the bottom right before the closing body tag, script, source, and then the link to it, index.js. Okay, so now we actually have our JavaScript loaded in the document. So I can actually go ahead and write a simple alert. This will display a pop-up message. So if I say hello world, if I save, it's gonna say hello world. So you can use alert to display cool pop-ups. Now let's say if I want to change this hello world text programmatic. So what we wanna do is we wanna use JavaScript to select certain elements in the doc. So we can actually select this H1 tag, but we can't select it the same way that we did in CSS. We can't do something like this, right? Because that's not valid JavaScript. What we can do though, is we can use the document API. So if you don't know what the document API is, it's this whole, the document object itself is an interface that represents any web page. And it has methods and properties that allow us to do whatever we want with the document. And one of the methods that we're going to use is called query selector. So let's use that. So I'm going to just declare a variable. I'll call it h1 tag is equal to documents dot query selector. And query selector allows us to select the first element that's a descendant of a node that matches the selector. And what that means is basically it's going to traverse through the entire document and it's going to look for the first tag that we passed in. So H1. So we're going to pass in H1. And now I'm going to check to see if it was found by using an if statement. So if H1 tag console log h1 found and if you guys don't know javascript i would highly suggest you watch my video on javascript because otherwise you won't understand what's going on okay so now watch this if i open up the console you can see that it says h1 found now if i remove this h1 from the dom you can see that it's not there anymore and you can see that let me actually zoom in so you guys can actually see this you can see that it says h1 not found right over here on the right side of the console and you can actually open up the console by doing Control shift i if you're on windows and i think it's command shift j on mac or you can just right click and just click on inspect and that should take you and you can just click on console right over here so let's bring our h1 back and you can see this h1 found all right, so let's actually do some stuff with our h1 tag. So we can reference this HTML element and we can change some stuff up with it. So for example, this element itself has a bunch of different properties, as you can see, and we can go ahead and reference certain properties. Let me find some documentation for you so you guys can see all of the different stuff. So you can see there's a whole bunch of methods and properties. Okay, but we're not going to go over every single method and property. We're only going to go over some basic ones. So let's say if I wanted to change the content of this, so we can do inner HTML equals my name is Anson. And there you go. My name is Anson. Okay, see how cool that is. I can use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM. Let's say if I wanted to give it some style so I can reference the style property and I can give it a color text color of red. I can also do the same thing for the background color as well. We can do maybe purple. See, pretty cool. Okay, now what else can we actually do? Well, let's say if we had a button. Okay, so let's just add a button here. Let's just call it click me. 
Okay, now let's say every single time we click this button, we want a nice counter to display the amount of times the button has been clicked. So what we can do is we can actually add an event listener. So one thing that I want to mention right off the bat is that JavaScript itself is event driven. It's one of the very popular programming paradigms and you need to have a good understanding of event listeners and how events work in JavaScript. So for example, anything I do right now can be thought of an event. So if I were to click on this DOM, this document over here, this purple bar over here, that's an event. If I click on this button, that's also an event. If I scroll, that is also an event. If I resize the browser, that is also an event as well. So let's actually use event listeners. So let's say for example, with this button, I want to detect when it's being clicked. So we need to use an event listener. So there's a, an attribute called on click and we can map it to a function. So whenever this button is clicked, it's going to invoke a function. So let's declare a function right up here. And I'll call it handle click. Okay. And for now, what I'll do is I will just simply alert a message clicked and we want to pass in that function wrapped inside these quotes with parentheses, just like that. Okay, so if I click on here, see how it says clicked and I can do whatever I want. I'm just alerting it just for an example, but I can do whatever I want. So let me actually go ahead and do a simple h2 tag and let's go ahead and give this the value of zero. And what we're gonna do is when our document first loads up, let's actually get this h2 value so we're going to go ahead and do const h2 tag equals, and like I said, we can select the h2 tag with the query selector, but let me show you another way how you can select elements without query selector. So let's say we want to select by ID. So let's just, uh, let's like, let me call this counter. So there's actually a method from the document object called get element by ID. And it's literally what it is. You pass in the ID of the element, which is counter in this case. And that's going to give you the HTML element H2. And if we want to get the value zero now, because that's our starting point. So what I can do is I can go ahead and let me console log H2 tag. Well, actually not tag itself. Let me console log the inner HTML. And let's just see what the value is. You can see it's zero. And I think if I try to increment that, that shouldn't. Okay, that will actually work. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So you can actually see that right over here. Well, okay, let me refresh. Okay, so I can do something like this h2 tag inner HTML is equal plus equal to one, or I could just use an incremental operator like prefix incremental operator and increment by one. So let's click here. You can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is called a prefix incremental operator. If I did h2 tag in HTML plus plus, if we first click on it, it's going to be one. And if we keep clicking on it, it's going to be 25 now. So that's pretty cool. So that's how you would handle a simple click event. And we can also add a click event to, let's say this h1. So right now I'm clicking on this h1, nothing's happening, right? But let's make it do something when we click on it. So let's and on click. And let's do h1 click okay so when we click on that h1 what should happen is we should get an alert you clicked on h1 uh oh whoops R wrong name of the function okay, there we go so we click on the h1 so anywhere i click up top over here because remember the h1 tag itself it actually spans across the entire document so you can see we have this whole background color for just the h1 tag okay so if i click over here it's going to say you click on h1 if i click over if i click up here it's not going to do anything because that's outside the h1 if i click down here that's not going to do anything but if i click here it's going to say you clicked on h1 what if we wanted to detect when the user enters a key on their keyboard so there's actually an event called key down and we can actually use that so let's just say for example documents on key down and we can actually add an event handler by simply doing something like this 
Okay, so let me actually open up the console and I'll explain what's going on in just a sec. You can see that I'm typing a bunch of stuff right now. And it's in key down. Let me actually log E key code. Uh, is there a way we can get the key, I think? Okay, there we go. Okay, so basically over here, document dot on key down. This itself allows us to handle the on key down event on the document object. Okay, and we're handling this event by basically assigning it to this function. So every single time a key down event happens, it's going to invoke this arrow function right over here. This E parameter is the event parameter. If I actually console log E, you can see that right over here, it's the keyboard event parameter. And you can see that there are a whole bunch of different properties that you can see. You can get the key code, you can get the actual key itself. So this is a way, so let's say for example, if you're making a game, you would probably want to detect for WASD keys or certain keys that would, you know, alter the state of your game. So let's just say if we want to handle scrolling on the document. So on scroll, scrolling. Let me actually put some stuff inside here. I'm going to go ahead and go inside the HTML file and I'll put a div and I'm going to go ahead and select that div and just give it a height of, uh, let's see, maybe let's do 2000 pixels. Okay, there we go. So now if I scroll you can see that it says scrolling so this is a good way to detect scroll events obviously and you can imagine that you can do a whole bunch of other stuff with the scroll event let's say if you wanted to make an infinite list where every single time you scroll down it's going to continuously fetch the data from some kind of database and you can re-render the new items okay so that's a scroll event so this is the event reference right over here you can just google uh, event reference Mozilla or MDN and you can see that there are a whole bunch of events there's there are network events WebSocket events CSS animation events and let's actually make this div a square so let's give it a background color uh, let's just say purple so let's say for example what I want to do is when my mouse enters this element it's going to trigger the mouse in event I think that's what it was called yeah mouse enter event and when it leaves, we want it to display like some kind of console message. So actually we'll do an alert. So let me just write the code for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select this div right over here. And I'll also show you guys how to select by class name as well, because you guys are probably curious about that. So keep in mind that remember class names, there can be multiple elements that are applied with the name of the class. So for example, this class is uh, purple. We can use a method called document dot get elements, right? Notice how it's elements because there can be more than one element returned or zero more returned. So get elements by class name. So let me pass in purple and you're going to see that right over here. It's going to say length. Okay. And you can actually just reference the first one by passing in zero because they're zero indexed. Okay, and console logging that will give me that div back in the console right over here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an event listener to this div. Okay, we've been adding event listeners to buttons, the document object, but let's actually add an event listener to a specific HTML element. Add event listener. We can actually pass in the name of the event, so we can do mouse enter. This is going to take in a parameter. You entered the purple box. Okay, so I'm going to save. So when I go ahead and if I enter into the purple box, it says you entered the purple box. Okay, cool. So let me get rid of that now. Let's make it something more cooler. So let's do something like this. When we enter the purple box, let's change the color of it. So we can do div.style.background. Color. I'm so used to my IntelliSense. So that's why I'm not used to seeing it not appear as a property. Okay, so when we have our mouse enter, it's going to change the color to blue. Okay, so let me bring this back here. So there you go, blue. And now let's make it so when it leaves, it will change the color back to purple. So we can use the mouse leave event div.style.background color is equal to purple. Okay, so I enter, it's going to change to blue. If I leave, it's going to change to purple. Notice how everywhere outside is not affecting that event at all. It's only being applied to 
this element. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Just wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how you can use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM. And hopefully that gives you guys some ideas on how you can build some cool stuff. Now, the reason why I am going over this at a basic level is because when you get into frameworks like React or Angular or Vue, you are going to be using a lot of these methods. Well, you you might not be using these specific you know methods because those frameworks will have high level methods that will wrap these functions for you so you might not even be using these methods at all when you use those frameworks but it's important to understand how these things work at the lower level so make sure you guys understand how these event listeners work make sure you understand that javascript on the client side allows us to modify the document programmatically so hopefully this all made sense and you guys were able to make use of this tutorial and i'll see you guys in my next video peace